For example, Muhammad says in Sahih Muslim that he has come to expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any but Muslims. That doesn't sound like the Muhammad I knew, so I said, well, that can't be a reliable tradition. And then another tradition from Sahih Bukhari, which says, I have been ordered to fight people until they testify that there is no God but Allah, and only then will their lives and their property be saved from me. And this is from the most reliable collection of hadith, Sahih Bukhari. And so I said, no, that can't be reliable either. Mm. And as you continue, you find Muhammad beheading mo- multiple hundreds of men at the same time. Um, you see him uh, distributing those men's wives and children into slavery. You see him torturing people for money. You see him, um, it, all these atrocities within Muhammad's life, mm. uh, and not always in defensive battles by any means, um, offensively as well. And so... You know, after trying to dismiss many of these traditions, I said, well, let me, let me piece together what's going on here, because if I dismiss all of these violent traditions, then I am basically dismissing the foundations of Islam. This is where I get my picture of Muhammad from. Mm. So looking just at the sources, what is the story? How do I reconstruct what Muhammad's life is like? And what you find when you do that, because there certainly are peaceful passages in the Quran. We mm. can't ignore that. Mm. Um, like chapter 2, verse 256 of the Quran, which says there is no compulsion in religion. Hmm. And that, those are often the ones that are quoted in those response are often to, the ones, to yeah. people. Chapter 109, which says, you know, those of you who... Did